Hey, welcome to Monroe Live. I'm Paul Turnbull with Monroe and Associates. What we do here is uh, benchmarking, but today we're going to do a quick little review on uh, the Hyundai Santa Fe 2025 hybrid. Um, nice vehicle and good size vehicle for the family. Uh, and this is a great example of a parallel hybrid. And we're going to use this vehicle as an excuse for me to talk to you a little bit about the different kinds of hybrids and how they work. And so we'll get into the little bit of uh, the details there. But first, this vehicle, uh, the Hyundai Santa Fe has a 1.6 liter turbocharged engine. It produces 178 horsepower. Um, and it's made it to a, a six speed transmission. This is a regular automatic transmission. Um, that also has a power takeoff unit that allows both the front wheels and the rear wheels to be driven mechanically from the engine just as you would with a standard uh, internal combustion engine vehicle uh, that has four wheel drive. Um, but this vehicle, they added this 40 millimeter thin section just between the engine and the transmission. And inside that is a 60 kilowatt electric motor and a clutch that allows them to disconnect the internal combustion engine and drive this thing with the electric motor alone or with the engine and internal combustion uh, and engine and motor together. And so that's why they call it a parallel hybrid because you can drive with either the engine or the motor or both in parallel. And so this um, little section here is where they have the motor. And then to drive the motor, of course, we need to have some power source. And so their battery is over here. And unlike electric vehicles, the battery is much smaller and much less expensive and, less, and nowhere near as heavy. Uh, and so we have a relatively smaller uh, battery and of course, uh, you have a gas tank because you have the internal combustion en en engine. Um, actually, it's a relatively small gas tank, but that's okay because it gets great fuel economy. This vehicle gets, uh, is rated at 34 miles per gallon. Um, that's a combined. Um, it does a little better in the city than it does on the highway as is typical for hybrids. Hybrids is sort of the reverse of your usual internal combustion engine car. Normally, the highway fuel economy is better, but in a hybrid, it's the, you get better use of the electric motor in the city. And so it's a little bit better than 34 in the city and a little worse than 34 on the highway. And so, uh, and this, again, this is, uh, the rear wheels are driven mechanically through this uh, differential um, down with a shaft from the engine. Um, it looks like we've got a disconnect uh, system for reducing the drag when you don't need it, uh, which is nice to see, and that's a fuel economy benefit. Overall, this kind of hybrid reduces the cost of a hybrid by allowing you to use the internal combustion engine components. Um, so the engine, the transmission, all carry over and you just insert uh, an electric motor and battery and you've got a hybrid. Um, there are downsides though for doing it this way. And so I'd like to talk a little bit about what the trade-offs are when you uh, choose to do this type of hybrid. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about what it looks like, um, how this is laid out in a simpler graphical form. So we got that 1.6 liter uh, turbocharged engine here. In that little 40 millimeter section, we have both this clutch and the electric motor. The clutch is probably inside. The electric motor is probably packaged like a donut uh, with the clutch on the inside of the motor. Uh, so then the electric motor is in, in between here, between the engine and the transmission. Now this transmission is a standard six speed automatic transmission that 
will have two planetary gear sets, usually three clutches, and to allow you to get six speeds. And the six speeds are arranged such that no matter what uh, throttle position, whatever the com torque command from the customer is, um, and whatever speed the vehicle is, there's always a gear that's pretty close to the optimum speed and torque for the engine. So you want the engine to be producing uh, the power at its favorite speed and torque. And that's the real purpose for the, the transmission. So a six speed transmission gives you six options. And so um, it's gonna be perfect at six, six speeds um, and pretty close at every other speed. So that's the transmission and that goes out to the wheels to power the car. With a parallel hybrid, um, you get fuel economy two different ways. The, the main way is regen braking. This enables regen braking. So every time you're coming to a stop, it stores the kinetic energy of the vehicle into the battery. So the, the motor turns into a generator. All motors are both motors and generators. And this one will turn into a generator and generate electricity and produce a drag torque just like the brakes, except that it's storing the energy in the battery. And then when you take off, the other way that it improves fuel economy is it does electric assist during launch. So as you, as you accelerate back up to speed, you get that uh, power that you stored in the battery, you get it back and it helps you accelerate the vehicle. So between regen braking and electric assist, um, and there's a couple of other minor things like powering all of your accessories so you don't need an alternator. So that the alternator was in the old days producing a drag torque all the time. And so this eliminates that, that regen braking powers everything from the electric launch to all your accessories. So you never have to charge it. You never have to plug it in. All of the energy that you are getting to it to improve the fuel economy comes from the con re recovering the kinetic energy um, during braking events. So that's how this system works. I want to contrast this. This is a parallel hybrid. It's a relatively simple hybrid, but you can't really talk about hybrids without bringing up the Prius. It's for 25 years now, the Prius has been the dominant hybrid type and just about every other company um, is now doing a hybrid system that is very similar to the Prius. And so that's a, a different kind of system. It's not a parallel hybrid. Um, we call this type of system a power split hybrid. And let me talk a little bit about how it works and how it's a little different from the parallel hybrid that we just looked at. Um, a power split hybrid so Toyota made it famous with the Prius, but it's also used, uh, Honda is using it now in the CRV. Um, it's, it's in the uh, RAV, Toyota's RAV4. Um, we used something like this when I was helping develop the Chevy Volt. Um, so just, there's a whole list, uh, Ford was using this and is still using this in the Escape hybrid. Um, so this is the type of hybrid system that many companies have moved to. And in some ways it's more complicated, in some ways it's less. It doesn't work the same way as that um, parallel hybrid system, but it has some of the benefits of both. So you have the internal combustion engine and this, this engine drives usually through a damper, but not necessarily. <clears throat> the, it drives a planetary gear set. This is just a single planetary gear set. And I'm sorry, my, my sketch looks a little iffy, but uh, the center of this is a gear uh, called the sun gear. And then there are a bunch of gears, usually three, that um, go around this, uh, move around the sun gear. And so we call those planet gears. And on the outside containing all of this is something called the ring gear. And so there's a sun gear, planet gear, and ring gear, three gears or gear sets, and they are all operating at different speeds. So the engine drives, in this case, the planet's 
the planetary gears. An electric motor drives the sun gear and the output is the ring gear. It goes out to the wheels. So one, one way you could operate this is you could apply, use the A motor to apply just enough drag torque to keep the sun gear steady. So the sun gear, sun gear is motionless. And if I did that, then I would have a fixed gear ratio out to the wheels. So then the engine would drive the wheels through a fixed gear ratio because the sun gear is fixed. So that's one way to do it. You get a fixed gear ratio, um, gears, uh, solid steel all the way to the wheels, 99 plus efficiency minus the small amount of energy it takes to use the A motor to hold that gear steady. Or the other thing that you can do in the more, in the more typical operating mode is the A motor can choose the speed of the sun gear. And if it chooses the speed, then the gear ratio between the engine and the wheels can be anything that you want it to be. And so, by adjusting the speed of the A motor, we can get any ratio we want between the engine and the wheels. That makes this a continuously variable transmission. And that's one of the key ways that this type of system gets its fuel economy. Instead of having six uh, individual gears, gear ratios, we instead, for every speed of the vehicle and torque demand from the customer at the pedal, this motor is able to optimize and give the perfect engine speed to deliver the power to the wheels in the most efficient way. So this is the perfect transmission when you do this, when you apply this, this drag torque to the sun gear, the A motor becomes a generator. And so some of the electricity that is generated when you do that, actually all the electricity that's generated, gets sent straight to the B motor. And then the B motor applies this as power directly to the wheels. So what ends up happening is 90 or 95% of the power from the engine goes right through the gears and out to the wheels with an over 99% efficiency through the gear set because we only have one gear set. Five to 10% of the power goes through an electrical path where it goes through this gear, it turns the A motor, the A motor becomes a generator the power goes to the B motor and then out to the wheels. So there's a 90% efficiency here, 90% efficiency here. So this path is about 80% efficient, but it's only five to 10% of the total power. And so the net transfer of power in this transmission is roughly equal to the kind of uh, efficiency that you get from a standard six-speed transmission. But the big secret is that although that we do have this loss going through the motors, we have made the internal combustion engine operate at its most efficient operating point. And so this system makes the engine more efficient. And that's the key to improving the fuel economy uh, using a power split transmission. In addition, when you hit the brakes, the, the drag torque from the wheels goes directly to the B motor and the B motor can store the energy in the battery. And so you get regen braking, mostly from the B motor. And you can also do electric assist. With this, you, the B motor can drive the wheels just like the, the parallel hybrid. Um, drive the wheels, we just lock the A motor so that um, so the engine doesn't spin. And so you can electrically launch using the B motor. And so with the two motors, you end up with a system that does everything that the parallel hybrid did, but also acts as a continuously variable transmission. And that's why this power split transmission has become the dominant 
method for creating a hybrid vehicle. And so you end up with a little bit better fuel economy in the vehicles that use the power split transmission as opposed to the um, parallel hybrid system. The issue is I've got two motors and two inverters. And so there's some costs associated with this. And the other issue is from an integration perspective, everything here is new. You can't just take an off the shelf engine and, and use it in this because you, what you want, you want to customize the engine to take advantage, take full advantage of the fact that the engine can be operating at its favorite spot. It never operates at, at uh, speeds and torques that are, that are less than optimal. And so you can design an engine that has a very tall peak of efficiency. And that's what the Atkinson cycle is all about. So the Atkinson cycle that is used in the Prius and other hybrid engines, um, it trades off the kind of peak torque capability, the good launch torque capability. Um, it trades off the good overall average fuel economy, all to get one really tall peak of efficiency. And because it has that really tall peak and we have this system that can keep it in that tall peak, you get with a, a special engine, you get exceptional fuel economy out of this. And then you have to make up for the, the things you traded off for the Atkinson cycle, like the lower launch torque. You make that up with the launching with the B motor. And so that's the, the way that the power split hybrid has taken over the world. And I'm very grateful to the, uh, the Toyota engineers in the 90s that worked this out in an astonishingly short period of time. Um, and reading the story of how the Toyota uh, Prius was invented is, is a great story. I highly recommend it. Although I have, to, I have to say that the power split hybrid was originally invented in 1902 by an engineer called named John Henry in Boulder, Colorado. And I'm really grateful to his wife who patented it um, in 1902 after John Henry passed away without recording um, what his invention was. And so because of John Henry's wife, we have the 1902 version of exactly this powertrain um, and in a complete description. Uh, so this now is in the public domain. This is uh, um, anyone can build a, a power split transmission. Uh, anyway, that's the, the, the way that the hybrid system works. Um, this one's a parallel hybrid and the Santa Fe is getting very good fuel economy with it. Um, it's an exceptional uh, example of a parallel hybrid though most of the hybrids like the RAV4, its competitor, um, and the CRV and the escape hybrid are using the, the power split system to get the same or better fuel economy with uh, um, sometimes better performance. So that's uh, different kinds of hybrids. And hopefully we'll get a chance to, to talk more on this subject uh, at a later date. Thanks from Monroe Live, I'm Paul Turnbull.